Okay, after much anticipation, this has been advertised all year on the John Green videos. Wait for it, the Mongols, or as they're known in China, the Yuan Dynasty. Um, as I've said a few times in class, this is the largest land empire ever created uh, in world history. Um, and it was started by this guy down here on the bottom. His name is Genghis Khan, or nowadays they pronounce it more as Chinggis Khan. And we'll get into that in a little bit uh, as we go along. So, um, as we've probably talked about a few times, um, grasslands and mountains northwest of the Gobi Desert. That's that desert that's in northern China. Um, there lived a nomadic tribe, largely unable to read. Many is a million of them. These are what known, is known as the Mongols. And they're one of many... Um, Nomadic tribes that lived on the northern borders of China um, lived mostly off of herding uh, sheep, goats, and horses, and cattle, and raiding for, yes, Kyle, they were raiding for booty, um, and they were in constant low-level conflict with each other, fought over pasture lands, water rights, um, and captives, and they engaged in many long and very bloody feuds. Suddenly, um, around 12... In the 12th and 13th century, they explode on the world scene um, by conquering the territories both of the, their fellow nomads along their area, but also settled societies, um, great societies like China, Syria, and Russia, and Korea. In about a half century, in less than 50 years, they create the world's largest empire, and they hang on to it for nearly two centuries. So it's a pretty phenomenal um, area of conquest. And you can see on the map below... Um, the areas that they went in conquest and where the dates were on it. Um, the dark red up here, that's what they started with. Um, and then in the, about 25 years, they expand out to the kind of darker pink. And then at the end of about 50 years, or the limit of the empire, is the larger, lighter pink area. Okay, so it's very um, quick and very brutal um, they, they create this conquest. Okay, so the founder of the empire, as I said, is Chinggis Khan. Um, he unifies the empire that he forged between 1206 and 1227 um, and then breaks it up at his death, but it does not fall apart. Rather, in Mongol tradition, he divides it among his four sons, um, which are known as the Mongol kingdoms or, in Mongol terms, the Khanates. Okay, largest of these in the dark pink, the darkish red, that is the Yuan Empire of China. You have the Chagate, Chagate Khanate, named after his son, the, the Golden Horde, which eventually um, becomes Russia, and then the Ilkhanate Khanate, uh, which is kind of in modern day Iran. Um, Iraq, parts of Afghanistan, uh, kind of the bridge between the Middle East and India and Central Asia. Um, and their control continues far into the 14th century. Okay, so during that time, the Mongol rulers, also called Khans, um, are great agents for contact and cultural diffusion between peoples of both the Mediterranean and the Pacific. So this whole area of Central Asia, uh, there is a giant trading network and communication network run by the Mongols. Um, taxes are levied, tribute is paid, all sorts of things. And it promotes interactions between people of many different ethnicities, religions, and cultures. And it enables the exchange and spread of ideas, goods, and technologies, and disease, which we know as cultural Oops, diffusion. Okay, and the Mongols were probably the greatest agents of cultural diffusion the world has ever seen. They didn't really create anything. They didn't really build anything, but they allow for all this other stuff to happen, and they and they are kind of the agents of all of this cultural diffusion. So they're, that's really their most important impact on world history is how much cultural diffusion that they sponsored and um, allowed to happen and created. Okay, so what's in a name? Well, the name Chinggis Khan means something like universal lord, and it's been spelled in a lot of different languages. You'll see it spelled in books many different ways, and you can see some of them there. And the term Khan, which is really the you know, Genghis King, um, 
is spelled in a lot of difference. Our alphabet can only really approximate the sounds of Mongolian, um, which is part of the, the Altaic family of languages, it includes Turkish. Um, and if you say these uh, different spellings aloud, they do all sound very similar. So for a while, Genghis was the most popular spe uh, spelling, So, but today we refer to it as Chinggis or Chinggis. Um, more on him later. Okay. Europeans also call the Mongers, Tat Mongols, Tatars or Tartars, um, and there are still Tatars living in areas like the Crimea in southern Russia um, and in the Ukraine. Before he demolishes the Tatars, they were the most powerful of the Mongol tribes, um, and that's probably why the name is loosely applied to the Mongols. In Europe, the form Tartar became uh, current after the name of the Hell or the Tartarus. Um, so you kind of the, the hell that they wrought on the people um, through their conquests. Now the Mongols organized their society pretty much along military lines. Everybody was a fighter, um, but Chinggis reorganized the army um, as the core of society and the carrier of many of his reforms. And under him and his successors, the Mongol army had the following characteristics, uh, and many of them were designed by Chinggis himself. So all males from 15 to 70 served in the army, all as cavalry. These were all on horseback. The army's 95 units of 10,000 soldiers are then subdivided um, into units of 1,000, 100, and 10. And many of the different tribes were mixed together in units of every size to ensure loyalty to the army above loyalty to the tribe. So he breaks up people. He doesn't let them serve with their family and friends. He breaks them up so that they become loyal to each other and not just to their particular ethnicity within the Mongol army. Um, no one in the army is paid, but they do share in varying degrees in the booty. Get excited, Kyle. Um, all contributed to a fund to take care of those too old or sick or hurt to fight. So they have a kind of a pension system. Um, and for three months every year, they go on these large-scale hunting expeditions um, that are intensive training simulations. Uh, they had to supply their own bows and military equipment, which had to meet their officer standards. Uh, gathering intelligence is a high priority. They send out scouts, local knowledge is sought, and they use the traveling merchants uh, for as kind of an informal trade network. Um, Genghis uh, hires foreign experts and advisors um, to help him figure out everything and and also to adapt new technologies. He ch hires both Chinese and Persian who are Iranian engineers skilled at making and using siege weapons such as catapults and battering ramps. Because the Mongols would often, when they attacked the city, they would just surround it and then move on and they would leave some troops behind to wait out the people in the siege. Um, got to the point where people knew what was coming. Um, they would surrender before the Mongols even got there to avoid having their city destroyed. Okay. Um, Probably the most famous or at least lasting um, impression of the Mongols comes in China, where they create what becomes known as the Yuan Dynasty. As we know, Chinese dynasties usually come to an end as a result of both the internal and external pressures, that mandate of heaven. Um, usually it would be corruption among high officials who overtax the people. Externally, the empire's armies are unable to defend the northern frontier against the fierce attacks by nomadic barbarians, among other things. The 1200s, the Song Dynasty weakens, becomes victim to this. Um, Mongols, led by Genghis Khan, rode out of China and destroy the, the Song Dynasty and uh, put themselves on the throne and in charge of China. They set up their own dynasty under uh, Genghis' son Kublai. Uh, and one of those who served the Mongol Empire is the foreigner from Italy named as Marco Polo, who we'll talk some more about later in the week. Um, and upon his return to Italy, Marco Polo writes of his experience in China, um, and they stimulate a lot of interest in China among Europeans and stimulates a lot of trade and also cultural diffusion. Some of the things that Mike Marco Polo brings back with him from China is the, uh, the recipe for macaroni, and that is where pasta comes from. Um, many of you may know that. Mongol rule in China only lasts about 100 years. Um, eventually, the Chinese managed to overthrow the Mongols, and they set up the Ming Dynasty, which we'll be talking about um, in our next uh, video in 1368, and during its height, art and literature flourished. So the Ming Dynasty will overthrow the Mongols using gunpowder, which they invent during this civil war against, or this rebellion against um, the Mongols. And at its height, 
um, it becomes one of the greatest Chinese dynasties, and then it does something amazing, which we will talk about um, in next classes. So here's the extent of the Mongol Empire. As you can see, the area surrounded in purple, or I'll draw it out here. This is the extent of Genghis's conquests, okay? Oops, farther down, okay? That's the Mongol uh, Empire. I'm sorry, that's the, the, the Yuan Dynasty under Kublai Khan. The green is the empire at the time of Genghis's death. Um, it does get bigger. More of Persia is, co is conquered, more of Russia is conquered. So they will eventually spread in this direction and in this direction. And eventually, they will make it under one of the grandsons all the way to the coast of the Mediterranean and threaten Jerusalem and Damascus. Okay, so just to compare with some of the other empires that we are familiar with, okay? Um, the Roman Empire, 1.7 million square miles. The Muslim Empire, which was the largest to that point, 4.2. Um, the United States, down here on the bottom, is roughly 3 million square miles. The Mongols are nearly 7 million square miles. And they accomplished this in 200, less than 200 years, this total domination. It's the largest empire the world has ever seen. More than twice the size of the United States. So, I'd like you to have ready for our next class. Um, write me a quick paragraph that explains why the Mongols were so successful at creating their empire. And then I would like you to compare and contrast the Mongols with the expansion of the Islamic empire. This will be due at the start of our next class. Thanks.